She's very attractive. Who? I feel Tess like Rizzo. you just go off of you're just picking albums based off of the attractiveness of the singer at this point. What do you mean? I mean, isn't that what most people do? Yeah. You know what? Fuck it. I'll, I'll embrace that shit. I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a, that type of person. Yeah, no. Shallow. <laughs> uh. I'm shallow as fuck, but I will never embrace Taylor Swift. I embrace her. Right now, we're we recording because I cannot talk about embracing her if we're going to be recording. She's over it's, 18. It's fine. She's, yeah, I know, but she's got an army of lawyers, and I don't feel like getting, you know. <laughs> I was about Lawyered. to hit the record button. I've been recording for three minutes. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Perfect. Listen, 90% of her content is about the guys she had previously banged. Okay. Yeah. yeah and you know what? And that's perfectly fine. Okay. Because it's. No, that means she doesn't get to be a fucking hypocrite. It's 2022. Someone wants to and, talk uh, about embracing her. She yeah. can't fucking lawyer up considering most of her song content. Okay, you know what? Let's not challenge T. Swizzle in her legal department to lawyer up because let's, 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 it's not it's not like a dance off. This is like <laughs> this is not bring it on. Yeah, I hope you guys know. I listen, still have a hit record. What's she gonna do? Sue me for my magic card? That's the can only we, shit we, I got. Can we, can we, can bring we it, can, Swiffy. Can we, I still have let's a hit talk record about because how, you guys are still talking listen, about that shit. Listen, we're, no, we're nobody's right now. We're nobody's right now. She's just <laughs> gonna shake it off. Ooh, clever. Shake, shake, still shake have it off. Hit record because you guys are still talking about the topic, saying don't record it. And Bongo's not here, so we need to avoid. Hey, we gonna we gonna do um introductions this time, you know, so people actually know who the fuck we are. Do we I, think about who we I think now's. I think now's the time are? to record, Jin. Fuck it. That's literally the start of my recording. It's fuck it. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> um, so, who wants to go first and talk about who we are? You know, maybe an icebreaker. Uh, I'm anonymous. No, I no I icebreakers. Oh. Perfect. So, first off, real quick, I just do want to put this out there. I am. I saw what uh, Chinese hospital gowns look like. They're like '90s, but they're striped, and they just remind me of those old, like colonial kind of times for French prisoners, like the, those stripes. And I keep thinking, like, are they healing you, or are they about to ship you off to like some colony? Oh. To Jesus. for hard labor the rest of your no. life. This is not going to go canceled. well. This is, this is our introduction. Okay. Why, Why is it? I'm going to go ahead and abstain from this podcast. <laughs> I literally didn't hit record because you guys were just talking about Taylor Swift for five minutes. And then I start. And then <laughs> this is where it goes. This is it. Um, so Because we're winging it. Hold on. I do also want to point out the last podcast we said we're doing it raw. Not no pun or innuendo intended. Um, we did edit it. The uh, a first, the first section did get removed because it wasn't PC enough. Correct. And then someone also deleted all the dead space and time. So we can't. We keep in mind we may never be able to have like those pauses for effect. Oh, because it's always going to get edited. Also, we are perpetually liars <laughs> because we are, um, we promised a unedited version of this and we are clearly fucking editing this. <laughs> We're terrible people. No, no, no. We still have the unedited files. I still have a bunch, of, a bunch of, no, no, but that's going in the secret archives. People never, so we can never be, uh, secret archives. You know, when we have to have a Patreon and yeah, that's going on the Patreon. raw files, they can yeah. have all the unedited shit and there's just going to be like 20 minutes total of silence throughout yeah. various ones yeah. and they're gonna be like wow it, it, it's good. For, 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 for $15 a month you've got access to the awkward silences and risque pictures of uh and we'll say whiskey oh so I where can think. I send my $15 yeah seriously uh, I'm gonna pay, I'm gonna pay <laughs> the Patreon. who's making the Patreon I've made every do, other account I do have one of his butt getting slapped I, I can't send my money why do we not monetize that why is that not an NFT right now is it just one cheek? Yeah. I, it like I'm told it's it's the athletic butt slap, like good job, get out there, kid. But no, I no, think no. If otherwise, there, if, the, was if, there, if the fingers was there a are cupped, if the fingers are cupped, it is not the get out, good job, yeah. boy. The fingers are cupped. I, yeah, yeah. Like how much cupping are we talking yeah. about here? Well, that's what that's what I'm saying. If the fingers are cupped, it is not a athletic. Uh, butt slap. No, but it also depends on the um, how quick the disconnect is. If there is a, like a half step, half a beat too long of like you know hand to butt, and it's like 
and it hovers if it's just a little too long, then you know it's not a get out there. That's kind of a uh, yeah. That's a, but like look, we're we're talking about a picture here, so it uh, it okay. could look like a slap because it's on the release, but mm, well, with their fingers straight. That's all I mean by cut. If the fingers were at least straight, like flat palmed. If that's then... a picture of me, honey, these fingers are never straight. Mm. <laughs> I don't even get it. Like, what? I don't even understand that reference. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it as don't is. Don't you need straight fingers for your fingernails <laughs> of justice? Uh, Listen, Nick, Nick. I will just simply say this. For whatever picture you, you are claiming you have for blackmail purposes, dude, little bit of that's alcohol worse. in me around the right people... And there is ass slapping going on all the damn time. So, yeah. Nick, I would like it known that I never insinuated or said it was Kitty. Yeah, I just did. said I have and a picture. Just, and, and ladies and gentlemen, like uh, that's ago, Kitty. Four days um, ago, you said Also a member of the podcast. I, I was refraining from, in, from, from naming names in this podcast for, 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 uh, for uh, what, anonymity reasons. But... This, she just dresses nah, 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 herself. Nah. These uh, this podcast introduction is getting a little inquisitorial. But um, speaking of which, how how's Whiskey feel about this? He hasn't said a damn thing. I feel like he's either crying or laughing. Oh, I, I want you guys to know that you know, in the time it took you guys to try and break this down, it's already an uh, NFT, and I'm a billionaire, so I'm out, guys. <laughs> See ya. Nice. <laughs> but by the time he finished that sentence, he was um broke. It's weird. I, yeah, exactly. I have a follow up question. Um, mm-hmm. yes or no is all I need for this. Felt nice. <laughs> to whom? Is that a kitty or a whiskey question? <laughs> or is that a yes? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, can I, may I ask a question? No, a whiskey question. has to answer that question first. Oh. We, mm-hmm. well, I thought mm-hmm. kitty was answering it. My, well, my lawyer says not? not to comment. Oh, okay. Okay, Zenny, up, you're up. Well, so because if kitty already drew drove the bus over herself, my just follow-up question was, Yes or no, firm or not? Nah. I mean, there's no real context, so I could just say. Well, one I mean, or the other. you could, you could, you could, you know, describe it like tofu is it firm, so <laughs> yeah, extra Are you firm? talking you about? Are you fridge. talking about the the point of impact, or are you talking about my hand? Um, Did you rest the plate on it? I think is what he's asking. <laughs> <laughs> I just love how the direction is going with this over a picture that is non-existent. Hold on. Whoa, 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 guys. You're getting too far. Okay. This is higher Patreon level subscription for these kind of details. Okay. Shit. (laughs) We'll just edit it out. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. This is where we tell. This is we tell the audience. Oh, uh, for the next three minutes, this is all going to be on our explicit Patreon. We we already prove we're liars. (laughs) We'll just edit it. We haven't. Even said the intro. Chubb keeps trying to throw it. No, this is the intro. Everybody was supposed to just gotta like you know do an icebreaker. Hello, my name is Chubb Chicks. Um, hold on, I have a question or or a comment or I don't I don't know what you want to make of a statement. Statement. This is so. So in recent times, I have come to the realization that most people don't remember names of things; they just remember attributes of things like. I re- recently the Riddler was called the question mark guy in pre- in a conversation for me. What? <laughs> and uh. like, should we be named or should we just be the the most noticeable attribute? Like, should whiskey just be deep voice guy? I was gonna say deep voice. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, no. This is all leading into Nick being the laugh. <laughs> and yeah, that's that exactly what's gonna happen. I'm gonna, call I'm gonna be dehumanized <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Nick Nick is laugh. Nick, uh, not more than a laugh in Binal's head. Got it, got it. Got yep, it. Kitty's token female, even though she's the one that said it. Jesus Christ. I actually have to wait for a bit to get some food. I'll be right back. Sorry. Whoa. Wow, he fucking chased him away. He's going to avoid the laugh conversation now. How is this professional. We... In the middle of a podcast, he just le- ups and leaves for a moment. <laughs> it's not like he's just showing up late like I keep doing. <laughs> <laughs> is this where we kind of put the warning up where we're like hey everybody please don't take anything personal each member of this group is actually a representative of something so forth oh no this- no no i would like to make it known in disclaimer all opinions are my own i represent no one but myself i am my own demographic i know you're saying demographic but i heard i am i am own demogorgon i mean sometimes i feel also like one- acceptable I wake up in the mornings forgetting what product I put in my hair the night before, and it's just, you know, 
I feel like a monster. Oh, uh, okay. I was just like, like, what? How does that work out? I still. But don't of course, have... no one's gonna take me serious because you know, short girls are never actually angry. They're just adorably cranky. Oh, your dorbs. Put put that knife away. It's so cute. That type of shit. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> why is that knife actually sharp? Because I'm angry. Oh, did you, did you sharpen that knife? Oh. I mean, if it's oh, a- Oh, look, oh. she's trying to stab me in the kidney. Oh, she made contact. <laughs> in their defense, it's probably a Hell Kitty knife, so. Yeah, and if it's yeah. small enough, you know, it it won't really do much damage because it won't yeah. reach that far into the body. It's like a paper cut. Yeah, yeah. But it's the, it's the effort, you know, that matters. The gusto, you know. Listen, I am still trying to find a decent, <laughs> and, and legal, mind you, uh, Hello Kitty Glock, because, you know, oh, I, <laughs> that's, I, just, that's I, just awesome. I mean, I just uh, get somebody even laser engraved. Listen, at, at this point, uh, I'm, I'm worried about Kidding having any weapon, because her arch rival is gravity. I'm worried she'll fall on her own knife before she actually stabs anybody. <laughs> so, that's wow. why she's got to get a Glock. She's wow. having, she's way way to one. out me like that. Ugh! It would be stabbing herself, therefore she would be stabbing someone. Mm -hmm. I think that counts as, like, a success. So, yeah. do we need to get Kitty a locker? No, or... it's it's best to just get me uh, a more adult-sized little um, baby jumper thing. You know, those things you put kids in and they can kind of bounce that. in them. And it just the, kinda... like, parachute things? It, it, it's those things that, you know, they, you know, you put the baby in it and they kind of like bounce in it. And, you know, it's got the little thing with cup holders and, you know, it just. And it gives so much more, so many more possibilities for becoming a war chariot. Unlike a walker. I mean, like you got more wheels on it. So that's more spikes you can put on it. No, no, um, no, not, not the little baby walker things because, you know, God forbid I get near stairs, but the stationary ones, little baby oh, jumper the things. Stationary one. Yeah. Okay. That's the, little, the only way I can keep myself the, safe. The little baby catapults? Home. Yeah, that's what I was oh. about to say. I think, <laughs> I think you're going the wrong direction here. It's going to be more dangerous. You <laughs> know what? That just, is, right? just, that, that, just that's what we're talking me, about. Oh. Stick me in a padded room with a straight jacket. Ooh, I doubt I'll hurt catapults. myself then. But, Got it. But this, this brings up a great question because Kitty believes that a catapult is the same thing as a trebuchet. Oh, like, fuck that. No. 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 Out no. of context. Okay. Is... No. No, that was not I... what that conversation was about. I was that trying... was about what would be easier for me to travel across the world with so that I can fling my enemies out of a damn either catapult or trebuchet, depending on what is easier to move around. I don't have a crew of 30 people to help me set this up just to chuck one person however many feet, depending on catapults, or a trebuchet. So and you unfortunately, didn't travel accommodations. You just talked about launching someone upwards. Oh no 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 no! Like this this is like, yes, it would be easier to just you know fly to other countries and like punch my enemies in the throat and just be like you know what you did, motherfucker. But no, I I need something that has a little bit more oomph. You know, something that really represents right. this is how pissed off I am at you that I want to launch you from medieval weaponry. I so... I still vote for the catapult because it's slower and more satisfying. I think a trebuchet will just kill someone the instant at launch. But Listen, no, like... whatever happens after I pull the lever is not my problem. <laughs> it's but, theirs. <laughs> but, but the real thing is you need something that launches someone and you need it to be mobile. So here's my here's my alternative solution for you. Go back to the baby thing. So, no, uh, like... You just got to have a car, so you're already mobile there, and you need a strong rope. And then all you need to do is just bring them to the nearest playground with one of those, like, merry-go-round spinning things, Ooh. and you just put that rope around it, and you drive the car away with them on that thing, them. and it launches them. Just ripcord them off? Yeah. Cause mm. so fast. It's like a I don't new know. form of torture. I was going to recommend, like... I'm going to try and stay away from areas where there's children in case I end up on a list somewhere because I am tying a grown man to something. Oh, actually, sorry. I should also say, disclaimer, do not try, actually try to do anything I just said. It is very <laughs> bad to do. I was, thank you for saying, I was about to say something, but you... That's why I'm sticking to medieval weaponry and siege tactics. Hold on. Because Let's that's kind go. of hard to do with modern. 
Let's go with something. Not true. My neighbor growing up had a trebuchet. Did you grow up in like 13th century France? Yeah. No. <laughs> were you like, were you like Scottish rebels town. or something? Like fucking getting your castle sieged? No, no, it's back when he went to the hospital and they put on those like striped gowns and then he was just off into the French colony. Oh, no. <laughs> Bring it back relate? around. I was like, how did Sorry. you relate that one? I'd like to guess as to what was being talked about while I was slightly absent ooh, from Ooh, computer. new segment. Nick Nick makes a guess. Nick, Let's go. I make a guess. Um, so are you tying children to merry-go-rounds and then accelerating them like a mass driver to fight no. children long distance? No, 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 no. No children in the uh, <laughs> the equation at all. Ixtay that. Ixtay the children. This is the list. We're not, we're not like, uh, we're out of the conversation, not out of life. It's, not children. Individuals over the age of 18. Con yes. Consenting adults. Consenting, Cons consenting non consenting victims. enemies of Kitty who are hypothetical and this is not based on any true facts. Oh, no, no. I have enemies. They exist. Fuck. I just Fuck. need to give my next, hands right, next podcast, castle, I'm going to have to drop those legal Jay. statements to like repeat every like 15 minutes. We're gonna, we need legal statements, yet we still. Oh, yeah, have I'm going to stop supplying everyone with legal statements after we say something, no, you know, no, no intro. with some controversy. Well, we might just open up their podcast with a legal statement. Uh, we say I, we're going to do all this stuff and we never do it. We're just going to no, keep adding to it. Okay, it's so, so here's a big road. disclaimer, okay? I have, like, grandiose plans of, like, world domination. I just have a really shitty attention span and really low motivation. So you got a Napoleon complex. If you're short, you want to take over the world. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let that one slide because... <laughs> <laughs> yes, but... I'm never actually gonna do these things. That's the problem. Like, I swear, I could just be the idea person for a megalomaniacal, you know, despot or something. Just come up That's with some great ideas bad. for world domination, but never actually do it myself. That's just as bad. What Why? do you think that job is like, being the ideas person for a uh, domineering individual who's trying to take over the world? Like, what things does he get, does he get stuck on? Like. Yeah. Like the, the logistics of um, sharks yeah, yeah. with freaking laser beams on them. That's like, right. How do we make that work? <laughs> We're running out of Nutrigrain bars and all of our secret layers. How can we handle the logistics of Costco deliveries better? Well, first of all, not my department. I don't handle logistics. I actually handle world domination plans. You need to go to accounts and requisitions to handle all of your deliveries. Also, who keeps letting fucking people have Nutrigrain bars in the lair? Because that just leaves crumbs everywhere. Do you? Want it's the evilest the snack. Do you want ants in the evil lair? Because that's how you get ants in the evil lair. No, it's just the evilest snack. You're like, <laughs> you think you're going to get a solid piece of bar, and you like bite into it, and it crumbles into bits, and it's like menacingly horrible that you just had that experience. It's just par for the course of the evil. Right, let, me, let me just go ahead and delete this email from Nutrigrain asking for a sponsorship. Uh... I also, I, mean, I also feel like you guys are being redundant saying evil lair. No, you can have a good lair. You can have like, you know, it's like dungeon, right? You can have a bad dungeon or you can have a sex dungeon. We can also. Oh, you could also be on the side of the dungeon owner and be like, you know, this dungeon dungeon is justified because my beliefs outweigh the other person's beliefs, yeah. you know? I, I feel like the same thing applies to lair. Like you can have a, a lair is not necessarily evil. It just has a bad rap. I, Okay. Layers are the only thing that have layer actions, though. Like, it Please is tell me layer... a layer action. I, I don't know. I, 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 thought layers, I thought layers were just implying it's an enclosed base, not necessarily that it's good or evil. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like a domicile. The, the, the headquarters in which the thing Dragon's happened. lair? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Zanny. How do you feel about uh, dragon's lairs all of a sudden, you know, all just being evil just because it's a lair? The lair oh. is evil. The dragon is not. Whoa. Wow, did you what just dragon assume are we a lair's intentions? Yeah. Like, it depends mm -hmm. on the dragon. Like, chromatic? Or are we talking... Like, wh what are we talking? Snack dragon. Whoa. One who hoards snacks. That's uh, not evil. You're telling me uh, no, Puff it, the Mad Dragon's lair is evil? That would be evil, because... The lair is hoarding all of the snacks. Therefore, all of the hungry and just like stone out of your mind and the late night uh, Taco Bell rush, just or just no, the no, midnight no. munchies. I'm, no I'm, one I'm, has I'm their snacks. That. 
I'm going to dispute that. It. A layer is not sentient. Therefore, it cannot actually perform an action. A layer is just a repository for things. The dragon is the one hoarding the snacks, not the layer. The dragon is just putting them in its layer. Yeah, but the what dragon if, leaves the layer. What if the dragon incorporates his layer into an LLC? Like, it, then, like, does, like, the layer express itself through money in free speech, you know? And then is it more like a person? You know, a lot of questions That's here. Yeah. Corporations are people too, my friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah layers are people too. <laughs> <laughs> it can lobby. And, you know, it's got a, a stockpile of snacks and gold. It's got all the power it needs. That's right. It's a political right. powerhouse. The dragon's like, oh, I've donated all my money to my sea cat pack. <laughs> and can can a layer unionize in that case then? I mean, pro the probably some sort of like cartel. You could probably make a cartel. Let's be honest. Here. I feel like Sandbox there would just be there's all these like like little minion creatures in a lair for the dragon, and they'd be like, "Sir, we've decided to unionize," and they would just all get burned immediately, and there would just be no recourse for the dragon. The highest, yeah, the well, unless the, you're the, assuming the that the dragon is anti-union. I'm because just assuming the there. I, I would. I would assume so. <laughs> no, 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 um, no, no. I just said the dragon is good. The lair is evil. So the dragon would be for the unionizing. The oh, lair, wow. the lair, which is the LLC, perspective of the dragon's politics. The lair, which is the LLC, is going to be trying to union busting it. It's going to do stuff like the they're trying to do a little meeting with between the minions and the dragon, and they're like, "Boss, we got this for you." And then just boulder falls on them, and they're like, "Oh well, fuck!" There went that plan. And then the dragon labor board comes around, and it's like, <laughs> "You haven't been paying your workers enough money, dragon." And then he gets fined from the dragon government. Yeah. They're like, Dragon mm. OSHA comes by and it's like, yeah. your This doesn't serfs. look like it's up to par. Dragon bureaucracy is a nightmare. Yeah, I can imagine. Oh. Just like, because of a long lifespan, so there's really no incentive to do anything fast. And the hibernation on gold thing is just kind of, yeah. It's also, the, when, they're, it's, when they're going to repossess, then, is that when they call in the adventurers? <laughs> <That's brilliant. laughs> oh my god. Oh, shit. You can't see me, but my face just went to my head of like, that makes so much sense. The adventurers uh, are just a pawn in the fucking dragon fucking game. Oh my god. The brain explosion. Oh, we're being used this entire time. We're being used by other dragons to repossess stuff. Yeah, yeah it's the other dragons doing it. It's not even the fucking town or the guards. That chromatic dragon down by the lake hasn't been paying his interest fees. So Go steal HOA. all his gold. He hasn't been contributing to the HOA. Dragon HOAs must be the fucking worst. Just the fucking worst. They're like, the, uh, those adventurous skeletons are on your lawn again, I see. Yeah. Your gold pile looks a little small this month. Well, this is why, like, most um, dragons are always social, or not social, they're isolated, you know, creatures. They don't congregate around each other. Oh my god, you, you get the HOA Karen dragon. This is the third week in a row that you have had one too many charred adventure remains. You're only allowed to have five, and there's clearly seven. This is why we have these fines and regulations. I'm going to suggest that you quickly take care of this before we have to take it before the board. Have did a great you, uh, day. Did you check to make sure that today was a burn day before you roasted him? I'm pretty <laughs> sure the weather conditions were a little too extreme. <laughs> oh god. This is way dragon cares. It just, god. it just makes me think of the um uh I don't know if it was like a clip from the internet or if it's a shirt of the dragons playing Dungeons and Dragons. But they're playing as like businessmen and salarymen. Oh uh we can't say copyrighted things. I'm not gonna say copyrighted things. I know what you're talking about, and I like the one dragon that's like, he's like, okay, um, I'm, I'm going to roll for my deductible. And they're like, <laughs> oh, sorry, this isn't within the changeover window for your insurance. Oh, God. What would be the worst class in that situation where it's the dragons playing as normal everyday lives? What do you think would be the hardest class to play as, and then like the easiest class? Or just like which ones you can't even say like which one's like the rogue or the wizard or the barbarian i feel like the easiest class would just be like a businessman who inherited his wealth from his family uh, the hedge i fund. think the hardest class would be something in the educational system 
a teacher in a disadvantaged community. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I like to play my games on hard mode. Oh, no. I'm also... So, so um, what? I think this is also leading into our topic of the day. We have one? <laughs> we I, do. It's I was just going to I was gonna say I've been looking through the the list that has somehow grown, and I didn't see don't don't that. worry too much. It's just gonna continue growing. Some of them dark, some of them light, some of them interesting. And the topic of today is Elven economics. Uh... <laughs> no, no. I'd like to shift the topic to 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 uh, to uh, Dragon Society with a very negative and suspicious lens. Humanizing the worst parts of Dragon Society. What kind of elves are we talking? Well, do we want to go with elven up economics or then the humanizing of dragons? I feel like it's kind of a both. No, they're, they're completely separate. I don't know. Like, the... Humanizing of, of dragons, I just keep imagining. Like, I don't know. I struggle with it because it's just, it's just like they well, polymorph into a, into a human and then they're just a greedy person. It's not like someone that's... Uh... You know, a little narrow-minded against dragons and dragon kind, but you know. Well, hey, most of my experience is chromatic instead of metallic dragons. <laughs> Fine, I guess we have to go with the creative direction of elven economics. So, is it just elven economics? I don't know. Like, hold on. Now, now I've got another question. So we've got like most of the topics are chromatic dragons whenever it comes up. But the metallic dragons are less talked about. Are they a minority, but like in the opposite sense oh. of they're the one percent minority? Wait, what dragons are these? Metallic. I don't think they would. They wouldn't oh. be the one percent. I, I don't know. They're a lot less common. Like, when was the last time you heard in a D and D campaign? Oh yeah, we we wandered into this this dragon lair by accident, and it was. A bronze dragon. He made us like some tea and sent us along with like some snacks. They're like, no, no. What usually happens is it's like, oh, it was a green or a red or a white dragon. You just well, and you know why? It's, you know why it's not around as much? It's because nobody's as creative as can be with metal dragons. Everybody just assumes metal dragons are weak. I assume that they have great taste in music. That has nothing to do with the fact that they're called metallic dragons. How do you like form an opinion like metallic dragons are weak? Like what in your life leads you to have that opinion? I think it's because, because everybody thinks metal is just susceptible to fire, conducts electricity, all sorts of stuff. So what's like the benefit of to being me. like I don't know what the problem is. Uh, no, I think it's I, the drug abuse. I the drug abuse? Usually <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Are we talking about a metal dragon or a hair metal dragon? There's a difference. Hair metal. Now you're treading on hair metal. Okay. <laughs> the Nacho Randy Savage Dragon. <laughs> the, the cream of the crop, if you will. I thought it was just because everyone associates metallic dragons as good or good natured, so they're pushovers. I don't know. The no ones one. you gotta watch out for are the rusted ones. Oh, no, I mean... Thing? Yeah, Japanese lore. They um, always have like metal dragons, but the rusted ones are the ones that managed to survive as long as they did. Are those the ones that didn't have alcohol? Those ones are the ones that didn't have alcohol. I'm so confused. Me too. I'm having flashbacks to fighting the Kushala in Monster Hunter, and this is not a happy conversation anymore. So, uh, Elven Economics, <laughs> you just stepped on your berry bush. What are you going to do about that? That is like years of planning just you, down the, yeah. down the drive. Rip cord. You, rip cord. Been trying to maintain that berry bush in perfect, pristine state for at least 300 years. And then Gary and his kid come by and decide to walk on it. You know, what are you going to do about that? What repercussions do you have? You're going to be feeling that for 50 years down the line. <laughs> So, oh man. I guess in that in that sense you have to wonder, yes, there's like Elven economics planning for like future generations based on the lifespans, but does that mean that the Elven legal system is a lot more complicated and in depth? Because they clearly had to plan for these repercussions. Okay. So no, because the the system would if it if the system itself was so in depth that they had to plan for all this and the longevity of the 
L's in their legal system, it would just make it even worse because then that would mean that any changes or addendums or uh, rev, uh, recommendations that have to happen um, would take that much longer to go through. So it would either be an archaic, old-ass, out-of-date system that was planned for from the time in the beginning and it never counts for anybody, or it would just constantly be changing all the time to try to keep up with something that no one would know any of the rules. I, I feel know. like there would just be like, you would only have the ability to consent to like the group outcome and you could never actually like have deviations from the plan. So like yeah. any small deviation from the plan, the only solution is like ostracization, like remove that person from the resource pool so that they can't damage like the greater plan of the elven society. So there really yeah. wouldn't be that many rules. There would just be like, a constant shift of need that everyone would have to adapt to that would be just like this dynamic body of law that would only persist for like 100 years and then it would just Hold change on. as everything changes i have i have a legit question how are elves even so high up there on their economy for the most part if nobody can afford their things because they think it's better than everyone else who's buying it it's a uh, generational wealth buddy come on they just have really good social media presence you know yeah you're on your phone, you're a human being, and you see these elves who are like 3,000 years old and they're wearing like really nice clothes. Yeah, they're like, just beautiful and like impeccable yeah. skin. It's like, why wouldn't I buy elven fucking facial cream? So is it is it essentially they're an entire species based around the artisanal kind of products? I think so. Yeah. They're not mass producing anything. There's no waste. It's like everything has an exact thing purpose. Like the guy who makes like like scissors to cut like roses from the elven rose garden they've pre-planned his work for a thousand years <laughs> he knows what he's doing now i, I want to jump back to the legal implications of things for elves let's say i'm a half elf and i commit a crime oh. am i can i do i have the option to be tried as a human or as an elf and then as a human they're like you must serve one lifetime sentence so, but like it's a hundred years or something well, so you're like, sweet, gonna outlive this sentence and keep going. I think, that's, I think it goes that's how back it would to, be. Yeah, I think it goes back to what they're saying of you, the elves don't have a legal system much like humans. So then it's, it's really an issue of a multi-race legal debate. And which one do they fall under? Do they fall under both? Or do they have to pick one? I mean, what's the jurisdiction of where the law was committed, like, broken, right? Like, if they're in a human city, they're going to be tried under the human system. But if they're in, like, you know, an elven city and they accidentally, like, drop a rock on a potato, like, <laughs> they're going to go through elven law, elven, elven law regardless. My, okay, I got another I think, question. I was going to say, Cobalt. I think you're giving them too much credit. If you're not elf, you're not elf. If you're half elf, you're not elf. I also want to poke a hole in this. You, How many elven societies have actually been truly agrarian? Most of them are based on artisanal, the, the scholarly, or massive amounts of trade. So I think their economics is really based more on general societal economics and what's tradable. Because elven craft is like, you know, usually what, what people look at, not... Elven turnips. Well, they're also, I wouldn't even say they would ever be a agrarian. I'd say they'd be, they've never moved past hunter gatherer. Do elves get cabbages or do they mm. grow their own? No, they <laughs> have to find it. Like the forest would provide and they cultivate the forest, but they're not farming the forest. Yeah, I was going to say, have we, have we, has anybody ever seen an elven farm? Like, is that a thing? Has anyone seen an elven farm? Yeah, <laughs> hey, I feel like, most... yes. I saw one in my backyard. <laughs> Most elven, God damn it! Most <laughs> elven like cities and civilizations are are based on you know two two stereotypes. You you either have the the very you know nature based live you know with nature amongst the forest and its bounty, or you have you know the ones that have moved fully into a more I, d I don't want to say segregated society, but, you know, they think they're better than everyone else and live in their fancy, like, super nice towns and are shitty to other races. And they have a lot of money. So, yeah, 
which, which part of the society are you going to base the economics growth and downfall on? I, I think the stereotype is really going to determine the, the true balance of things here. True. Which universe elves are we going at? You know, are we looking at like asshole age, elves or Witcher, somewhat agreeable elves? Like high elves, thought, like classic D and Ds. I thought they separated that, so now it's just wood elves and high elves. Also, is this before the other races decided to not destroy the ring, or after? Oh, damn it! <laughs> oh, this is Lord of the Rings. I was going for like Dungeons and Dragon elves. Yeah, but I feel like there's a mentality shift equivalent in D and D that could have happened. Sure. Nope. Like, I, like uh, I don't, I don't know. What would that be? The the des- destroy the phylactrophy, phylactrophy of uh, what's his face? That lich guy. I forgot. It starts with the Sauron. No, uh, it, it's the guy that keeps showing up. I think he's got like the red. I think like the red mages or whatever are followers of him as well. I don't know, but he's essentially the dark lord of the of the D and D universe. Oh, I was thinking of the wrong thing. So. That also kind of makes me curious because this is we have been arguing about elves for a while, but are we talking like the I'm super beautiful, sexy, tall elves, or I'm gonna bake you a little biscuit elf? Landless bread elves. I do like the idea of us talking about like Santa Claus elves during this entire conversation. That's pretty funny. Yeah, because there's two. I just realized there's two very different types right there. Outside of even just trying to say like if you're looking at like you know more humanized elves there's a bunch of different representations throughout media in them but then you also you know you got saint nick you got keebler you got uh a little bit like fairy gnomes or fairy elves i mean then you've got all the different races from skyrim too and those are actually becoming more and more elven canon in terms of alternative lore so what what makes an elf that's what i'm trying to figure out uh, I feel like this is a very deep question. We need hours and hours to discuss. What makes an elf? Well, I mean, we is can't it the say pointy elf ears. Makes... Yeah. But does that mean a Vulcan is an elf? That's a good question. Ooh, space elf. And then. Oh yeah, Eldar. Yeah. There's more elves there. I think I think it's the disdain I feel down to my core. That's what makes an elf. Okay, a Vulcan is definitely an elf. <laughs> We're just gonna, I just gonna get so much disdain for uh, Vulcans. I, I no, the self disdain. They're very disdainful of their emotions. Like there was, there was an episode that was amazing where a Vulcan actually became a serial killer because oh, of his yeah. uh, PTSD and like survival. Um, was it like what's the the survival um, survivor's guilt? Yeah, yeah, uh, and in uh, DS Nine. Highly recommend that episode. That was a great episode. It was like psychological intrigue, a uh, bunch of stuff. What was it? It was a um, transportation gun that shot a slug. So it was around. a transportation gun that shot a normal bullet that would then, it, when it comes out of the gun, it teleports to the location that they want it to hit the person so that he could just go into his room and shoot anyone in that another room. It was so cool. And they were so dumbfounded because it was a physical slug round. Like, it's not a phaser. That also is like, go, like the elf, half elf legal system question and everything is if the elves knew that they could, like a half elf, we could get away with being tried for human, but have the longevity and just normal characteristics of elves, you, they could get away with so much. I feel like there would be a lot more evil versions than what is actually represented they always represent half elves or a mix as like downtrodden and despaired and i'm just like nah i feel like they would just abuse it abuse their longevity and exposure to the human race like not just abuse the the mix of the two you you walk the line in between two completely different societies and cultures oh you do run a risk though because you're you're living up to about 180 years you make a mistake and you hit that elven, it, you get tried as an elf, you're just done. Uh, they're, they're like, oh, you, you stole something? Well, 100 year sentence because that's like nothing to an elf. And you're just like, that's over half my life. It's the high risk, <laughs> high risk, high reward lifestyle. Yeah, they're, they're like, you, you stole the wheels off a cart. It's like, what is this? What's going on? This doesn't. None of this really answers the economics question. 
Because I think the economics is tied too much into other parts of society. Honestly, it's, it's like economics today. You can't just study economics by itself. There are so many other things that tie into it that it just kind of bogs it down. Economics cannot be discussed singularly. It's just, no, it doesn't work that way. So the elven economics has nothing to do with the fact of elf, and it really would just dictate based off of what the preconceived conception of the elf is, whether it's like the space elf, small elf, D&D, Skyrim. Yeah, you, you have to pinpoint what exact Elven society that you're going to be discussing, and that that itself will actually determine the discussion of Elven economics. Well, let's pick a society. What, what Elven society do you think is the most interesting to talk about? I'm going to be biased, and I'm going to say 40K. That's because I like 40K. <laughs> no, I like, we can talk about the Eldar. I'm not, like, super versed in Eldar in that lore, though. though. I'm all about the Tyranids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Their lore uh, is literally thousands just... Thousands of little bastards wanting to chew people's faces off. It's great. Yeah. They're so cute. Uh, as a quick aside of 40K, when I was walking to the movie theater uh, to catch Batman today, this guy was walking in, and I could overhear what the conversation he was having with his friend. He was actually explaining him something. And he was like, yeah, and this guy, you know, he fights, takes over all the tribes of man. And I'm like, this is, this is the story of the fucking God Emperor. Fast forward to uh, about 20 minutes later... Um, I'm ordering my concessions at the concession stand, and this dude is talking about Nurgle, and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, he's going to need more than fucking uh, 20 yeah. years to explain this shit. <laughs> this is, this is, uh, he just gave me, I was like, ooh, Emperor Man can go on for about six hours. He's going to be talking throughout the whole damn movie. I, I have a question, then. Did you catch the Batman? Um, did I personally did not catch Batman. Okay. I was gonna be like, "Wow, you just you just beat an entire police force there." Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like a bunch of supervillains. Yeah, it's just yeah, I don't know, Joker. Just... Like, I think I think most of the supervillains at one point caught Batman. Did they catch him, or did he just you know like Rorschach them and you know I'm not trapped in here with you. You're trapped in here with me. Well, I think I think what really happened was it wasn't like a like a you're trapped in here with me thing. It was the writers going, I got I thought of a cool new gadget for his bat belt to use. Let's have him get caught so he can use it. I mean we have him figure out this plot me. narrative. He has to be caught in over here. Alright, perfect. Will he make it out? Well yeah. Oh, hold on. If we are talking about what makes an elf and so far the only thing we have said is pointy ears. Batman has pointy ears on his suit. All the different variations of them. Had the pointy ears. I know they're bad ears, but they're still pointy. And he's got that really obnoxious, smug, I'm better than everyone kind of attitude the way a lot of elves tend to have. And he's got generational wealth. Oh, yeah. He's checking those boxes. Oh, he's got a lot of elf qualities. Yeah, so, but this this falls under the PC thing of he was a human, but he identifies as an elf. Oh, oh, oh no, 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 no. No. <laughs> trans species this this is really really gonna get to that TOS <laughs> we're just gonna we're just gonna pop the brakes out this direction uh, that's a good that's a good point though because that was the only i know you wanted to talk about elven economics but my big thing was on the candidates list did we read the TO, tos no not at all oh god i just signed this up for a couple more uh, podcast services today and did i read any of the uh, legally stuff no but i didn't sign i signed by name I signed everybody else's name. Oh, yeah. What? Also, announcement to all viewers or listeners, whatever you want to call yourselves, we have not read any of the TOS stuff. Okay, this is, is going to be legally we binding. Clicked, at a certain I point. agree and moved on. Mm. I mean, everybody does that. Uh, you just you scroll to the bottom of the fucking box. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I read. The worst ones are the ones that make you have to scroll all the way down. You can't just click the bottom. I'm... So I'm gonna be honest. I think I like I'm ready just to stop the podcast here. I'm I'm on that is Batman an elf thing. Just I I, I have to sleep on those. It's a deep follow up. Add, add it to the next uh, to to the ever expanding podcast topic list. Yeah, is Batman an elf? How do you make an? Can he identify as an elf? Is is the elf really just the pointy ears, or is it more? Is elf is is being elf in a state of mind? 
I mean, he does craft a lot of his own weaponry, a lot of his own armor, like a lot of elves tend oh to do. Uh, but counterpoint to that, he does it inside of a lair, a cave, under a mountain. Oh. Hmm? Hmm? He has a lair. Like a he could be a dwarf. Is he an elf or is he a dragon? Exactly. No, no, no. Wait, no, because because it's not a bat lair. It's literally a bat cave. So is that more closer to dwarven? Definitely a dwarven. Dwarven tickler. Oh, yeah, this this is going down a rabbit hole. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to figure what defines a cave versus a lair. He calls it a cave, but... But some yeah. people also call it the bat lair. Yeah, well, it's just a matter of perspective, earlier, right? Well, the earlier definition was that it... I don't, I don't remember who said Not it. all lairs are said. caves, but all caves can be lairs. Yeah, yeah I, because I, they I said was it was subterranean this underground. You said, someone said it was like underground and closed, right? Which it is. He calls it a cave, but it's more of a lair. So, yeah, really, he could be a dwarf. He could be a dwarf, dragon, elf, like, still could be human. I think he's just trying to fill every fantasy role. He's a human yeah. variant. Mm. No, my brain's going into weird places again. I think the question is, it is Batman an elf? But what is Batman? I mean, in human terms, he's a guy who definitely needed therapy. I agree. A lot of annoying stories could have been avoided had he just gone to therapy. Uh, That fits for almost every superhero. Not all of them, but most of them. Also, I really think Vanya, when he said, like, I'm done, he just, like, checked out. He so, just bounced. He's like, nope, I, I have things to think about. I am so gone. I've been doing a bit of research on this, and apparently by actual definition, a lair is a place where a wild animal, especially a fiercer, dangerous one, lives. However, in the uh, <clears throat> figurative sense in comics, it's a place inhabited by a uh, criminal or criminals, a superhero or a supervillain, essentially being a resting place, secluded or hidden. Um, and even can be used in a, in a positive sense. So, But it does say that typically comic books or superhero stories, they refrain from using the word lair because it's already been associated to supervillains. Ah, evil! <laughs> I told you! But they actually <laughs> say that all the superheroes that have their own secluded or hidden place or, or secret retreat or base of operations, they're all considered lairs. They just don't use the actual term. Except for villains. I told you, lairs are evil. No, no, they're good. They're good. They just, they just stopped using. They just have them a bad rap. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And they're saying pre, like prime exclude, like, like really good examples of layers is not only in the criminal sense, but also things like the Bat Cave and the Fortress of Solitude are yeah. both layers. Hmm. I wasn't even thinking of the fourth, just solitude. That's a layer. So that makes me think Batman is more dwarven, because unless you want to go with like some of the uh, uh, like Skyrim type lore, um, elves normally didn't uh, hang out in caves or lairs. Shoot. So I'm going to have to agree with Vanya. This might be a further development. I feel like there's a lot of different ways that can be dug and spun. The good news is, I don't think we even answered his original, well, we kind of answered it, the original topic question, and we still went full circle. I mean, in terms of economics, it makes sense for Batman to be a dwarf, but also at the same time, no, no, it's just going back and forth. God damn. I'm, I refuse to chime in because of the fact that elves suck. That's right, I said it. <laughs> so elves, that's a hot take for the night. You're that elves, the whole time because of that? They might be artisanal, in some ways, but it's just like traditional kind of things they do. Like you've never really heard of like their armor being something amazing besides the material they use. And it's something they pass down. But have you ever heard of a bardic elf? Not really. Oh my god. Oh my god. Guys, guys, hear me out on this. I, I'm sensing this pattern here. Okay. So last podcast, we had... The Valley Core Dwarves who were, you know, they had the, their Etsy shop with the crafted friggin' driftwood sculptures. And we have artisanal elves with their little homemade goods. A 
modern-ish setting of what the races would be in today's world and what would they be selling at a farmer's market. I think this needs to be discussed later. Oh, no, that's... <laughs> oh, God. I think, I'd I think like elves... to propose we change the name of the podcast to the uh, Fantasy Etsy Review. <laughs> Just, that that, that like can the, be that can be a um a, like a little short we can do for every. I think but, elves know. would own the farmers market. That's where yeah. they would be. Look at this produce. Took three hundred years of pruning, refining, and planning to get this one turnip. I feel like the elves would have a stand, and they just wouldn't even sell you anything. It'd just be loaded with merchandise, and they'd be like, "Look at my delicious strawberry," but I don't have any space to sell a single one. But it's so delicious. Oh, let me let me go ahead and put the strawberry jam on my lambus bread that I'm not selling. But, oh my well, god, that I mean, that is Elven economics being it, dicks at a farmer's market. Yeah, that's what they are. I mean, if you think about it, if there's a dwarf at a farmer's market, they got mounds of potatoes they're probably selling. What you look over at the elf stand, a single strawberry. The cost, your entire family's fortune, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then when you go to buy it and they say that, and you're like, oh, I can't afford it. They go, mm, that's too bad. And then just pick it up and slowly. I knew by the look of you, you could not. <laughs> you can't handle my food, traveler. This this strawberry was bathed in waters from Norway and Norway? <laughs> kept in the sun in Hawaii. And it just, it has to go to different stretches of the world of how this single strawberry was brought to this farmer's market. Uh, That's sure. a lot of CO2 emissions for a single strawberry there, Mr. Elf. Yeah, you flying also, that strawberry around with your private jet? I don't think, Solar uh, paneled. <laughs> I don't think strawberries Energy efficient. are right that long, sir. Is this a organic <laughs> strawberry? Or do well, you well, I like, I like in the describing that strawberry, the elf like flexed on you in two ways. One, it's like, look at all these exotic things that went in there. But also, these exotic places that I went to that you didn't go to. <laughs> Oh, God, exactly. It hurts. They just used some spell so that it can never spoil, and they just took it all over the world. <laughs> Would the spell still make it edible, though? <laughs> yeah, of course. It never spoils. Oh, and can since you just that... imagine the elf flying first class with like a fucking strawberry plant as his carry on? He very gingerly <laughs> buckles the strawberry into the seat. Oh, you know, it's in like a, a diamond shaped case. Do you think in this like food market there is this craze for non spell affected foods, much like non GMO foods? Mm -hmm. oh, probably. The whole foods of the elven economy. <laughs> Unenchanted foods. Mm -hmm. The whole fucking certified not a chant non yeah, unenchanted. <laughs> Meanwhile, every poor human being everywhere but is just like what? <laughs> Wait, that, is that why cabbages in, like, all these fantasy settings are so expensive? Is because they are, like, technically the most organic thing because they are not affected by any any spells? Oh, God. Can you imagine if it had no spells, no enchantments, and no chemicals in it? It would spoil in, like, a few hours. That shit would cost a fortune. That'd be amazing. People would line up for that shit. <laughs> The fact that it spoils quickly would be like a selling point of like, you must indulge yourself in this product within the 30 second time window before it spoils. Speaking of time limo, win limbo, window, uh, I have about three and a half minutes before I'm at an hour. Okay. I, no one, Banya has said stop, but again, I haven't heard anybody else. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's because my brain started wandering into other places. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I need to learn to control it. So would that mean that cheese is like the most organic, non-enchanted thing? Oh, in no, a fantasy universe. Oh no. <laughs> cheese this... is the most non enchanted thing. There it's must not... be like spells to help with cheese production though, right? Like they would the wizards would invent the cheese spells. Something to curdle the cheese faster and air it out and yeah. nobody has as many friends as a man with fine cheese. That's right. It's fine who's still alive. He hasn't said anything in solid like he left. That's uh, thinking wait. about Batman as an elf, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, let's just end the podcast on that. I'll I'll burst and uh, I'll, I'll clip that later. <laughs> it's like what a good solid. Let's just say this this minutes. episode two. Yeah. All right, folks, this is episode two of whatever the fuck this podcast name is. It has opened up a lot of questions, a lot of questions.
<laughs> and we still haven't answered a single one. We haven't answered a single one of our questions. Yes, yeah, good. No, we got two <laughs> questions. No, one question was answered of Valley Core Dwarf. We have a to be continued about is Batman an elf in elven er uh, economics? I, I promised the listeners that we'd follow up with the next episode regarding Batman and elf, but we're kind of bad at promises. We're bad people. Serious. I haven't promised shit. Promise the listeners, all one of you, all two of you. Uh, so remember to like and subscribe. I can't say that. <laughs> oh, no, face. No, no, just cut it. Just cut it. We're done. No, we're just cut I'm it. done with. Nope. That's we'll it. figure we're this done. out eventually. I'm ending it on that. You, you're gonna have to go down in shame with that. It stopped right after you said that. What about the other person recording? I'm still going in case anything comes up. <laughs> but if you want me to cut it, I need to hear a cut it from at least three people. All right, cut it. That's one. Fine, you already said cut it. Cut it. Cut, cut, cut. <clears throat> cut it.